Right. What is the result of this dream work? It follows a way of reasoning, same way of reasoning all the time. It's a certain kind of dialectic. If dialectic is a way of reasoning with established goals and an established way of proceeding, and if it goes through similar steps, then it's a dialectic. Right. So this way of reasoning is a kind of dialectic, and it has these consequences, doesn't it? Matter. So let me just change a couple of things here. What is the result of this uh, dialogue of Plato's that we were going to get into tonight? Uh, does it follow a way of reasoning? Well, can you not follow it and master it if you put your time into it? Well, does it have a consequence? What's the difference between those two? You were talking about what you just read and what you just saw. Right? Yeah, go ahead. No, no, I don't have a comment. Hmm. Yes, thank you for volunteering. Um, the difference between the dialectic of dream work and the dialectic of the hippias? Is that what you're asking about? Did you read that curious dialogue, hippias? I read the lesser hippias. But <laughs> Okay. The third of the greater hippias. Can we not ask what are the consequences, the results of that kind of dialogue and what we're doing with dream work? Well, the consequences. No. The consequences of the hippias are that the person discovers the consequences of one of their assumptions. Like they don't know what are the implications of what they assume. Mm -hmm. And so Socrates draws it all the way out to the end until they finally see it. Even but, they don't like it. That's, uh, that's for sure. The consequences what? of this dialectic is that the person comes to the place where they get to make a choice on something in their life much more like meaningful. Okay. What does it presuppose? The dialogue of the hippos. What does it presuppose? What kind of world does it presuppose for that kind of dialogue to have taken place? Let us assume it took place. That there, that there, the community is used to a certain kind of reasoning. Pardon? I said, perhaps that the, the culture um, That's has right. developed an art of um, There has to be some reasoning. culture. Come on. Right some kind of rational culture that has its own expectations, right? Mm-hmm. They're like very friendly with each other. They're very friendly with each other. And they do have kind of like a set of expectations in the lesser Hippias. Hippias just gave a speech and Socrates' friend is like, hey, why aren't you praising him or blaming him? Like it's expected he's going to give a reply of praise and blame. Okay, in the same way now, would you tell us, this looks like a Hellenic, right, Greek. Now, could you do uh, one for us? <laughs> uh, I don't, Hippias seems to me to be more like USA than Hellenic, just as a character. Just looking at the first two pages. Yes, he may be just like someone in the United States. Or a political figure in the United States. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But how about my question? Well, 
hostile, uh, defensive uh, people. Especially in respect to reason. Totally, people don't want to. People don't want to answer a question about something they say. That's right. It's like the bad kind of obvious. That's right. Like, see, hey, the world of discourse has moved from this to this, <coughs> and in here. Would you not find it amazing for someone to be able to sit down and sit through it, similar to Hippias in our modern world? It seems like in the Greek world, it makes a difference what kind of ideas you have and what you're thinking about. Yes. And, and that, that in some way, um, you can change your ideas for the better. Yeah. And would you say that's current in our everyday I world? I think people know they have ideas. Pardon? I don't think people even know that they have ideas. That's right. They don't even, that's right. They don't even know they have ideas. Or that there's a way of reasoning. Or that they can look at them separate from their identity. That's right. So look here. There are different kinds of worlds. Come on. Put them, make, make the points. Right. This is central. What has happened? What is what kind of discourse in our culture is accepted? Relative. Yes, and only one discipline dominates it all. Opinion. No. What kinds of opinions and what kinds of discourse are permissible in our world? Re relativism. Psychology. Oh, okay. <laughs> A certain kind of psychology, but nonetheless psychology. Mm -hmm. Right? And I interest in uh, behind it an in intellectual development through the sciences. So our world, right, with a heavy role of rhetoric, agree? Mm. <coughs> Dangerous kind of rhetoric. So some years ago. <clears throat> when I was in motivation research, I had a job and I was doing some research for a company and I was attending one of the uh, major um, advertising agencies, a big one. And as I finished my talk, I walked down, you know, and one of the executives said, hey, Pierre, come on, sit in here just for a minute. Uh, like your advice on this. So I walk into this room, and there are about 30 guys sitting around this big oak table, you know, beautiful, and everyone has their feet on the table, and they're smoking and having coffee. And, hey, all of them were experts in psychology, communication, and you, right? All of them. So they showed this film, which is only, by the way, 18 seconds or so within that. And it was Hunt Food Commercial. And so it showed the Hunt Food Commercial, a bottle going with a ketchup popping out, pop, 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 with musical background. And they, they, all of this energy, and all of these guys, you know, their, their lives depend upon how successful this is. Mm -hmm. All of that talent to drive home a point that will make someone richer or poorer. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, uh, what's the issue? And the guy said, well, uh, the composer of that musical piece is insisting that with the addition of the pop, 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 which was not in the music, he is objecting to the intrusion on his great work of art, this pop, 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 pop. <laughs> so he said, we'd like your opinion about this. He said, we were prepared to have 10,000 copies of this musical piece and we're going to distribute it to all the people. 
that are important that make decisions about ketchup, food distributors, etc. He said, you think it'll work? That was it. Mm -hmm. right, what does that mean? Okay. Our whole culture is designed to pour all your intellectual efforts <coughs> in rhetoric. Mm -hmm. The whole discussion going on today between fake news and genuine news is the role of rhetoric. It could be turned for one purpose or the other. No one stops and has a dialogue, like Plato, on any general theme undermining what's going on in our country. It never happens. Why is that? Come on, try it. Um, try it. Because they make their money based on the drama yeah. that emerges from not having that dialogue. Right? That's absolutely right. Right, but the whole culture <clears throat> accepts that. Like, all of these people take all of their learning and they march looking for a chair to sit in and be paid. And that's how they're using their knowledge. Right? Does that cause you to wonder about what the hell is going on or what's going on? I mean, the 30 guys, the PhDs all over the place, all kinds of studies. 18 second commercial, worth millions, it's going to go national and international, right? The role of rhetoric in our culture is now being face to face. What is fake news? What's fake news? Like, depends on. Where do people get their news today? Facebook. Not newspapers, right? The, the majority, 70% of Americans put all their time on Facebook. So fake, fake news is like you get a sampling of the kinds of things that any individual is concerned about, right? You get, get a, what, what do they post? What are the themes that come up in their posts over a period of time? And then you design um, a news story based upon their prejudices and concerns, uh, tailoring the facts to their prejudices. That's right. I want a name for that. Fake, okay. news. But, <coughs> Fake news. No, no, yeah, I know that. Okay. But what would you say is going on? Because we have two examples of dialogue, right? We have two kinds of dialogue. What's going on? Tyranny. Well, let's see. Igmar did a good point, didn't he? Yeah, no, okay. What does that mean? That's what I'm asking. My question. Do you agree it looks like behind it all we're suggesting there's only one theme? Right? And that is? Wealth. That's the issue. People want wealth. Money. 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 They want wealth. <coughs> so let me suggest something. What would happen if you decided to reread the hippies and every place they talk about beauty, you substitute for beauty the theme wealth. What is wealth? Right, come on. You can do it. Come on. Hey, you can make a platonic dialogue that grasps this issue of wealth behind one page. Right? You can do it in several ways. But certainly, uh,
to impulse plays a major role, doesn't it? Would you not agree that we had a magnificent example of this in Cohen, the president's private lawyer, Trump himself, the great quest for great wealth? They don't care how they get it. Matter of fact, they prefer it appears to be one way and not the other. So we do not agree, come on. We can substitute the idea of wealth in this dialogue of hippies and we can run it right through the same thing. Okay, here's my question. Is it likely, however, that it would be very difficult to find someone who would stand in the same place as Hippias did with Socrates in such a dialogue today exploring the idea of wealth? Do you think the participant who would be the other side of that would be willing to go through such an interesting dialogue on wealth? Nope. So wait a minute, is it possible equally well that Socrates was able to pick on someone who was willing to go through? There may have been many sophists in that day who would never would have taken the road with him. Yep. So if it were possible, come on, try it. Then I'm raising the question, if, do you think it is possible that someone who is wealthy would be to allow themselves to be subjected to such a dialogue? Exploring the question, what is wealth? By the way, we'll go right down the same lines. Trump's so audacious. Pardon? Trump is so audacious, he may be that eager. No. Pardon? Do it again. Trump is so audacious, he may be that eager. Like Hippias is just like, yeah, I'm the smartest, I'm the best, I do everything, I'm the best in my city. And that's the way Trump talks, like, I do everything great, you know, like, I got the best people. Okay. So, right, but in, in interviews uh, where the talk starts going in any way that Trump considers embarrassing, he's gone. Like, if, if it reflects badly upon him, he won't continue it. Yes, he's gone. Yeah. Both it, both off the air and out of his cabinet or anywhere else. Yeah, I've seen him take his mic off and just like... No, we're not going to go down that road. Yeah, what's that? Therefore, our culture blocks any dialogue, public dialogue. Therefore, the only way to break this is to do it on the web. So how are the big money boys? Why not make a dialogue designed on the idea of wealth? Two people, right? One plays one role, the other plays the other, and follows the same logic. Step by step is in the hip here. We're substituting wealth for beauty? Of course. Well, by the way, what do you think wealth is? Um, it's either your ability to buy things or have things. Anything like rocks? No, things of, that you consider to be of value. Oh, that it presupposes, wealth presupposes you think it must have some value. No, now what is the idea of value must be very clear to you. Well, in terms of wealth? Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah like what a, would be a value? Home, a home box. Let's, let's, let's try it. Things you can resell. Oh, because you can resell it. Or exchange, right? Uh, what kinds of things would you put in the category of wealth then? DVDs. <laughs> what? Technology. <laughs> Technology might be wealth. A home. Uh, money. Uh, Barber. Gold. Jewelry. Yeah. Jewelry? Mm -hmm. sure. Okay. Now look here. Then we have a group of things that could fall into this category. Mm 
Right. Say, so what is it common among all of those things that it brings up the issue of wealth? There must be something common in them all. Power. A power. Oh, then, then uh, this is only, it's only uh, an advantage if you can use it for power. Is that right? The essential feature of what was power. Right. And pleasure. And? Pleasure. What's that? Good feelings. Well, and really, I mean, the whole idea of living. <laughs> you can't have a family nowadays without wealth, so you got to have family. Uh, so it, people think if you can't have a family, you, you can't even, you, can you really consider yourself alive? <laughs> yeah. Uh, is it possible that there can be many families that are successful without wealth? Mm -hmm. At least a little bit though, right? <laughs> but if you only have a little bit, would that make you wealthy or poor? <clears throat> you could be poor and have a family. Oh. Oh, beauty and ugly. Right, wealth and poverty. If you only have a little bit of it, if you only have a little bit of beauty, then you're talking about something ugly if it only has a little bit of beauty, right? Mm -hmm. Are we finding similar categories we can slip into? Mm -hmm. Say, another thing. Um, would you agree there's something essentially important that's missing here? Um, to what extent is wealth dependent upon <laughs> Others agreeing to similar values. Much. Completely. Like, would you agree that if you have a bag of gold and you go into various cultures today, uh, you're not going to get much in some cultures yeah. that are thriving? You go to Amazon and yeah. the Amazonians and they just look at you and say, yeah. Yeah, this what are you doing with that yellow stuff? <laughs> this doesn't yeah. help me eat. That's right. So therefore, what does it depend upon? Everyone agreeing. Ah, then it presupposes there must be a common opinion. I see. Right, wait a minute, a common opinion about what? <laughs> the value of some rock, about what is good. Hmm. By the way, would you agree wealth also depends upon uh, what's going on in society? Yeah. Uh, in other words, at certain times in society, it has greater and less value? Yeah. Uh, what does that depend upon then? There's a certain, what word are we going to use? Appropriate. Appropriation. Are we not? At certain times it is appropriate to have this or that. Even if you have a little, it's sometimes it's very valuable to have even a little. Mm. <coughs> oh, if opinion changes, what happens to wealth? It changes according to the time. Looks like you're talking about the stock wait, market. Wait. Does it have any inch? Now look here. Does wealth have any intrinsic value? Uh, huh. Well, if it did, then Trump would be living a meaningful life. <laughs> well, then, so no. We go back now. What do you mean by wealth, folks? Come on, what do you mean by wealth? Uh, is it possible? Go Come on, go into extremes. Is it possible that someone poor may still be wealthy? Yes. Yeah, sure. In what way? A good library. <laughs> A good library. Good. More. Come on. Love, happiness. They could have some item that right now is meaningless that in 10 years is appropriate to the common opinion. Oh, okay. Which... Or they're in pursuit of their own goals. Yeah, see, watch what we're doing now. <clears throat> We're now looking at the idea of wealth in a new way. <coughs> mm -hmm. right? 
Are there different ways to talk about wealth? Sure. That doesn't include these things? Oh, yes. Sure. Like one thing that is not, it can't be called the wealth or having wealth is good health. Mm -hmm. Right? It can. No, that can be. What? That would be very wealthy. Oh, what other things might be considered to be objects of wealth? Knowing oneself. Oh, that kind of stuff? I'd like that. Look here now. <laughs> We're going to build another category for wealth, right? Look here. Health, well-being, know yourself. Wisdom. Come on, what does that, what does this do now that we're putting a different emphasis on the idea of wealth? What did that do? Takes it out of opinion. Ah, so now the role of opinion we can now use, can we not? In the what? same way Socrates is joined with Hippias. Puts itself from psychology into doctor. Pardon? Do it again. And from psychology to doctor. To philosophy. Okay. All right. Come on. Um, so, is it not possible now we can ask what is the effect? What is the effect? on the person who is wealthy in each way. Could you use this in a dialogue with someone? Come on. All right, now you point out, excuse me, the idea of wealth has appears to be two dimensions. And therefore, when you're talking about wealth, uh, <coughs> would you agree that circumstances play a major role in one, but not be, may not be in the other? Go ahead, make your choice. Yes. Well, you could use the ideas of rest and motion and say that the guy in category A was always in motion because they're always seeking to acquire what's changing and becoming. And so uh, never truly at rest and never reaching then happiness we, or goodness. Okay, the person here has to keep their mind on what in order to preserve their wealth? The stock market and the economy and the Opinion. politics and... Oh. Hey, same thing over here. This person. Where's his mind? Excellent. Pursuing excellence. Pursuing excellence in themselves and, and, the, and the thing that they want to pursue. A different kind of, same or a different kind of excellence? Oh, different excellence. Right, there could be different excellences in each, could it not? I don't think you could have excellence in wealth. No, no, You'd no, never no, reach no. it. But certainly there can be an idea of excellence. Oh, sure. Sure, sure. Mm. So therefore it presupposes a different language where you have to find out and you're exploring the idea of excellence. There are going to be two kinds. Is that right? Yeah. <coughs> ah. Well, there's no, there's no opinion about whether you're healthy or not. <laughs> <laughs> Right, there's no opinion on whether or not you're, you have self-knowledge. Like you either got it or you don't. Well, and if um, you have it, somebody can't take it away from you. Well, then look, look here. Let me suggest something. Uh, 
Why don't we go through this dialogue Can't bid on it. matching the hippies with the, what we have structured out here Good idea. and see whether or not you can just go through it in a similar way with the idea of wealth. Okay. And then, if we only knew someone who had a good website... Uh, you do. We all have a website. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great to, to get a situation where two people could reason on this? Substituting wealth, using the same approach. Of course, if they, no one may watch it. <laughs> Someone might. Fine. Well, that would be fun. You could take it up and just present the first line. So with that, look here. Go to the end of this. Uh, okay, let's go to Hippias. Here. Dr. G, can we take three minutes? Uh, for oh, a okay. Where do you want us to go here? The end of Hippias. Which one? The greater. Oh, the, the greater first. Greater. So she lines it up. I think <coughs> Okay, okay. Wouldn't you agree that this whole dialogue hangs on <clears throat> getting Hippias to say beauty is good? Would you not agree in our presumed dialogue shifting terms, the person who holds to wealth being so important that they're going to have to assume it is good? Would you agree, if it is good, <clears throat> then it must be beneficial? Mm -hmm. Right? That's the logic, is it not? Yes. Then it's all over. Okay. Because there is no benefit in beauty just itself. So, hey, well, 
Wealth is good. Oh, um, what benefit do you gain from it? Would you agree that have to go through the usual arguments? The usual arguments, however, are going to be determined by the effect these have on the public, right? That these things are only valued because public sees them as valuable, and any time they change their opinion, that wealth disappears? Well, on the other hand, we go for our second meaning. Come on. B. Can you say those things are good? Would you not follow that have to be a discussion that would go on and talk about in what way those things are beneficial? Could you go ahead and see and visualize how it might go? Because ultimately it would have to include an inner kind of health, an inner kind of well-being, and all that so. So you would then contrast the two, would you not? Look, all of this reasoning is comparative. So you start with one theme, you make divisions, then you look for the examples that they may be. You look for what runs through them all to find their commonness. Then when you get that commonness, you want to see whether on a higher level you can show that that unity can establish the many and the ways in which it proceeds. Right? Can you not? That's the way you would proceed. That's what he's doing. Right. Now, in Proclus, Proclus says this dialogue is a is a typical dialogue that precedes dialectic. Right? Because it's a way of testing people. Right? Hippias is being tested. This is a testing dialogue. It precedes any kind of dialectic. So therefore he can take someone who is relatively unsophisticated in reasoning, but is good with words, and that's why he chooses the person he does. This is testing someone who represents the many. So in the same way, if we were to play the game with wealth, we would have to test it with someone who accepts the many's viewpoint, show its opposite, show examples of each, and proceed that way, wouldn't we? So let me suggest something. Let's come back next Friday. Come on. And let's keep in mind the hippias, greater hippias. Read it with both. Hey, read it with both. And let's see what you can do with it. All right? Fair enough? Yes, sir. Good, good. Bon voyage. Question. Where, is the, where in Proclus does he discuss the hippias? Uh, chapter 5 uh, in uh, uh, Proclus' commentary on the Parmenides. And, uh, <clears throat> I can get this, the page too if you want. Yeah, I'll send it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's just what does this test? Pardon? What does the dialogue test? What is the test? What? Yes. Oh, it's a way of testing whether or not someone can go through this and benefit. Hippias does not. He goes through the whole thing and he considers it irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And Socrates says, oh my God, you know what? I goofed. Ah, we did the whole dialogue and I never got my own question answered, which is what is beauty? So in the same way, we could go through this entire art dialogue, you see, without finding out what is wealth in mm -hmm. the true sense. Mm -hmm. So, he's being tested, he fails. Someone else who goes through it may say, oh, now I see the difference. I'm no longer going to pursue this. <clears throat> I'm going to pursue this. Now that makes him a candidate for the dialectic. Mm -hmm. 
Oh. So they have to not only see a benefit in the dialogue, but also be willing to give significance to the conclusions and change yeah. their life. That's right. See, these being tested with question and answers, that's the preliminary exploration of the dialectic. Mm -hmm. And he's opening them up to make them... See, these are all simple distinctions. It doesn't involve directly the uh, four major divisions in the dialectic that Proclus talks about in the same chapter five. Okay? Come on. Good. More questions? That's it. Thank you. Oh, uh, you're leaving early tomorrow, or I, you said no Saturday, right? I just That's to... correct. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, there's, there's a particular kind of problem because of what's coming. Okay, but no problem. But the answer is no. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So I'll see you next Friday. Thank you. Okay. Put the two together, right? Yep, right. The, the tables remain as is. I have to break them. I don't know. Yeah.